Okay, you guys have covered the whole waterfront, and there's like a thousand follow-up questions I want to ask. So let me just narrow it down to a few uh, of the important ones. So one of the things that I've been trained to do is that when we start talking about the benefits of combination therapy, my job is to say, what are the risks of it? And are there significant risks, and do we need to be concerned about it? And then I want to come back to you in terms of working your way up to combination therapy and what you know how you manage to the guidelines. But let's start with the risks and then see if those are impacting these decisions. So the, the one risk that I take into account that lends to asking why even worry to add the ICS onto the double because it might help, it might not help. But the fact is that two to three percent of patients per year on ICS can get pneumonia, okay? Now, if you're eliminating 25% of the flare-ups, if you pick the right patient, that may be a risk that the system and the patient is willing to accept. Um, but there is that risk of, of um, prevent of immune suppression and, and, and a minor infection spreading into a pneumonia. Um, with the long-acting bronchodilators, I'm, I'm with Byron. There's a lot of theoretical literature. Certainly we know there's a small signal with regards to cardiovascular disease and sudden death. But I always say in a, in a baseball stadium, you know, you pick out three people in, in a year and they may not do well. The rest of them feel better. Um, and is that a choice you're willing, willing to make? Actually, the biggest problem I see with the llamas in in men who have borderline uh, uh, urinary retention with prostate problems is we can tip them over. Okay. And so I'm careful in that situation. Those people weren't included in the clinical trials, by the way. Right. Um, so, but they come to my clinic. And so I am a little cautious sometimes with the anticholinergics. But in general, the llamas and labas are extremely well tolerated. I agree Any with that differences? 100%. No. Uh, the only thing I would add is that while the pneumonia concern is the greater concern that I have, uh, uh, ICS has been potentially associated with some cataracts, some eye-related issues. There's a potential issue with your bones if you're using high enough doses. Uh, like any other medicine, the, you have to balance the risks and benefits of everything that you're going to use. In general, the medicines we have available in COPD are very well tolerated and reasonably effective in what we're trying to do. That doesn't mean that we don't need better. We do. Uh, we need to define therapies for specific types of disease, uh, but it's helpful. I will come back to an issue that we haven't discussed that I'd be interested in Frank's take. Uh, we talk a lot about advancing therapy, so going from llama lava to triple or some situations where you might go to the triple faster. Uh, but if you have someone, for example, Frank, who w isn't a frequent exacerbator, who comes to you who had gotten stuck on triple therapy, uh, recognizing that we both have some concerns about that, there's, there are t potential arguments and there are studies which have suggested that you might be able to cut back on the dose and that's one of those areas where maybe that eosinophil count that you talked about before might help you a little bit, isn't that right? Yes. So I'm, I'm a believer in, in looking at the CBCs that are all over their chart. Often they're gathered during exacerbations, but you're describing patients that don't exacerbate. But it's a rare patient that at some point somebody didn't get a CBC. And if you look at the eosinophil count, that little count that we just kind of ignored, it doesn't mean a whole lot, it has something to do with parasites, maybe asthma. Um, it, uh, if it's over a, a count of, well, let's say if it's under 100, then they're probably not going to benefit a whole lot from inhaled corticosteroids. And certainly if they don't exacerbate, I would never put anybody who has no history of exacerbations and 100 or less eosinophils on an inhaled corticosteroid. And the counter to that, if somebody comes in without a flare-up history and with a null eosinophil count, I'm going to stop the ICS and convert them from uh, certainly, uh, uh, if they're on a LABA ICS, I'm probably going to convert them to a LAMA LABA if they're symptomatic. Do you guys prefer the fixed dose combinations, or do you prefer to ramp up with two different inhalers? Uh, you never want to give people two different inhalers if you can avoid it. It's hard enough to get people to learn how to use one inhaler. Okay. And I actually think that that's an area that we need to talk to Maria about 
because it is increasingly an issue. It's, it's so, on the page here. Okay, so you know what happens is you train your patients how to use it. One of the advantages of the app that the COPD Foundation has come up with is that we've got all the inhaler videos available for people to look at, but you teach someone they know how to use an inhaler and two months after you've seen them, their insurance company has changed the formulary and they've switched them to a new drug, which has a different device. And if you don't know how to use the device, you're wasting your time.